Today is a new day. Doesn't matter what you've done, the Lord can forgive you. God wants to change our hearts before He changes our circumstances. I believe that God is going to bring peace in a broken world through you. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Our Power and Thanks for your support to us. Good morning, dear friends of Our Power. It's time for 2023 Hong Kong special. This year, we choose Arise Hong Kong as our theme. As we know, over the past three years, Hong Kong has faced the pandemic. There were many challenges and difficulties in the aspects of our society, economy, and mental health, etc. We had confronted great difficulties. Now that the pandemic has passed, it's time to arise. Therefore, our power is now with you. Arise, Hong Kong, not only by our strength, but to rely on the power of our Lord, our Mighty, to rely on our God to give us strength and blessings. Therefore, this year we chose the verses from the Bible to be the scripture for this special. It is in the book of Isaiah, chapter forty, verses. Thirty-one. The verse is, "But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint." We wish that this Bible verse be a blessing to each one of us. On this hour of power special, we have invited many good friends to share their experiences at different stages of their lives. Even they have faced many difficulties. Their lives are still arising. They are lawyer, educator, pastors, professionals. They care for the grassroots and the homeless. You can see the love of God in them. They manifest the love of God in the community. I hope that through 2023 Hong Kong special, arise Hong Kong. We encourage each other. In the love of God, arise Hong Kong. Our Power 2023 Hong Kong Special, Arise Hong Kong. Our guests for this year: Dr. Moses Chen, the senior consultant of PC Wu and Company; Dr. So Ka Sen, the former Secretary General, Hong Kong Examinations and Assessment Authority. Reverend Professor Emin Ng, the head of Christian Ministry School, Gracia Christian College. Mr. Patrick Lip, the former Secretary for the Civil Service, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government. Reverend Dr. Jason Yuan, the former Director of Chinese Culture Research Center, China Graduate School of Theology. Dr. Louis Lok. The director of Lucian Group Limited, Reverend Dr. Derek Lee, the former president of Christian Ministry Institute, Miss Edith Shi, the executive director of C.K. Hutchison Holdings Limited, Pastor Alistair Ng, the gospel ministry director of Media Evangelism, Reverend Dr. Peter Ho. The founding pastor of EFCC Tongfuk Church, Miss Shelley Liu, the general secretary of Family Development Foundation. Our Power 2023 Hong Kong Special, Arise Hong Kong. Our guest for today is Reverend Dr. Derek Lee. The former president of Christian Ministry Institute, Reverend Derek Lee, through a drama at secondary school, he deeply felt the heart of our Heavenly Father and decided to believe in God. He is a professional, but he chooses to serve God because he knows this is an eternal career. Though his son has encountered an accident recently, his family and his son. Confronted together this trauma in life, and testify the power of God manifested in His Son. He encourages us: whatever we face, we have to strengthen our hearts and wait for the Lord. Later in the program, Reverend Derek Lee will share his testimony. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Today, the message of Pastor Papa Shiller is the will to life. In life every day, we are making choices and struggling with the decisions for life. Pastor Papa Shiller advises, when facing choices for life, choose the will to life. Don't give way to fear and worries. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. We need to take courage to face our difficulties. Even though there is resistance that's always pushing against us, but God wants to deal with our hearts before He solves our problems. Thus, we have to learn from Lord Jesus, press through our difficulties as joy and blessings are set before us. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Our program is bilingual broadcast. If the TV is the equipment kind of facility, you can choose to watch our power in original English or Cantonese dubbing. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, visitors. Hello, church family. We are so happy that you're here. You know, we hope you leave here today with a crazy desire for life and life to the full. You are loved. Now, let's be with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your power and goodness. We thank you, Lord, that even now you're doing a good work through your Holy Spirit to transform us into the image of Jesus. Help us every day to grow and become all that we were called to be. And we ask for it in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you, and so do I. In preparation for the message, Matthew 21, 4 through 11. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. It's Hour of Power 2023 Hong Kong special again. The theme of this year is Arise Hong Kong. Today I am delighted to invite my good friend to share with us. He was a professor at several seminaries, the former president of Christian Ministry Institute, and now a visiting professor at Grasha Christian College. Reverend Dr. Derek Lee. Hello, Reverend Thank Lee. Thank you. I'm glad you came for our interview. Thank you. Please say hello to the friends of Hour of Power. Dear friends, I'm honored to share and meet you here. I hope you can get to know me better and the God 
whom I serve. Reverently, in the Christian circles, many people know about you because over the past few decades you have taught at various seminaries. But regarding your faith journey, how did you believe in the Lord when you were young? Not many people know about this. Can you share with us how you believe in the Lord? All right. In fact, when I was in secondary school, I studied in a Christian school. In my family, I was the first one to believe in Jesus, which was a traditional yes. Chinese family. Like worship idols. Yes. <laughs> when I was in secondary school, I came to know about Jesus. I clearly remember that I was in Form 2. The school held a gospel camp. In that camp, what inspired and touched me the most was a drama to perform the parable of the lost son from the Gospel of Luke. I played the role as a father. What does an old man look like? At that time, I was a young man. I thought being an elderly would be coughing a lot and with poor health. Therefore, this is how I express. I could feel the elderly. How he waited for his son's return. And I also realized that our God, how he waited me to return to his love. Because that drama, I realized that God was waiting for me. I didn't know him, or I turned away from him. But he waited for me to come back. That was my first experience. Faith is about relationship, not about morals. I have to be a good person before believing in you. But he took the initiative to wait for me to return. He took the initiative to establish a life relationship with me. me. No other religion can offer this to human. God has a life relationship with human. Up till now, I do realize that my faith is not about moral and ideas, a belief of being a good person. I agree. Our faith is definitely not like that, but a faith based on a life relationship about love and giving. I do believe that this is the love that Heavenly Father gives us. Yes. How loves us with kindness that nurture a yes. relationship and want us to return to him and restore the father and son relationship. Yes. In fact, he loves us. We are actually his children. Right. But we strayed away. And we didn't he realize. He is waiting us. I do agree that our faith is about relationship. Relationship with God, relationship with God the Father. Right. As for changes in behavior and in moral, because you have faith, your life is not the same. And the rest right. will be revealed naturally. Right. From your commitment to your baptism during that period, any struggle in your faith that finally... In fact, I had always felt entangled in sin. Even believed in Jesus, I always encountered weakness and difficulties. I stumbled again and again, kept on struggling in these life cycles. I remember until four or five years later, that I truly my faith. Then I came before God and committed to God once again. What was your final affirmation that gave you the courage and decided to get baptized? I think the Friends of Hour of Power may also have this question. Many people said, I think that Jesus is good and I believe in him too, but I don't have the courage to make the decision. I'm afraid that I'm not doing well. My character is not that good. Just like the question you asked just now, what should we do to be like you, to get baptized finally at the last moment? I think in my life experience, you have tried many things. You think you are capable of doing many things. But you find that there are many things that you may not be able to control or accomplish them solely by yourself. Instead, must rely on an external power. But what is this external power? From the Bible, I found the answer. It is the God who created the universe. He creates us. He builds us. Actually, this external power 
is the God who created human and universe. He came to this world to lead us through many different experiences in life. Therefore, I finally decided I have to believe in Jesus, this true God. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Yes. When we are willing to seek God, God yes. will definitely reveal himself to us yes. so that we can come before him to become his children again. Yes. What you just shared reminds me of one thing. I think in the stage of youth, Christian education is very important. Yes. I yep. heard that you believed in the Lord at school. Yes. When I interview other pastors, they believe in the Lord this way. Yes. Therefore, it's a good time at the stage of youth to sow the yes. seeds of the gospel so that he can have the foundation yes. of faith. That's also what I experience to believe yes. in the Lord. Yes. Because when you are young, you would pursue your dreams. And the direction you want to take, no other complication to deal with and to resolve. Mm, the hearts and minds are still teachable. Yeah, right. <laughs> Easy to put God's word in their hearts. Yes. Therefore, our brothers and sisters who believe in the Lord must do more work to spread yes. the gospel, especially youth ministry must do more. I also want to know, how did you embark on your ministry journey? Yes. In fact, during the final year of my university, I had to decide how to walk the future path. I studied secondary school in Hong Kong, then went to study in Canada until university. Throughout the whole process, I did realize the grace and guidance of God. Considering my family situation, it was impossible for me to study abroad, especially my first year to Canada. I got three A grades and gained admission to one of the top three universities in Canada. When I looked back, it was impossible. Even the universities in Hong Kong didn't accept me. How could I enter a Canadian university? Even that, it was one of the top three universities. It was God who changed my life. He changed my perspectives on people and things and the direction I should walk further. Therefore, the process was full of ups and downs, especially the first year in university. I then went back to church again. In the church, I did realize that my life should be returned back to God so that I can have the assurance and know how to go forward under such situation. I committed to God, got baptized with such testimony, I would continue to walk You like surrendered this. your life to the Lord? Yes. Did you study theology after graduating from university? Yes. Really? After graduating from university, I worked for two years before studying theology, because at that time, during my final year in university, I have to decide how to arrange my future, stay in Canada, work, or study theology. During the decision process, at that time, we have a brother fellowship. There was a brother small group at church with eight people, and at least six of them had become pastors or professors. We communicated and shared on how to serve God in the future. If we wanted to serve God, we went to study theology after graduation and then to serve at church. As about the community and other people, we had limited connection in real life. Especially, I had burden to serve Chinese people. Therefore, I kept praying, God, I need two or three years of experience in the Chinese community, whether abroad or returning to Hong Kong. In the end, I decided to go back to Hong Kong. Thank God, because the subject I studied, the Hong Kong International Airport at that time, 
was about to establish a new department, and that was just the subject I studied. Therefore, I was hired. Every day, I could have the opportunity to go in and out the airport with the employee ID card. There were more than a thousand employees in my company. Sometimes, I chatted with them. Sometimes, I had to observe their work, because my role was to inspect and quality control in regards of bacterial count.、Mm. Was it a relatively high-tech job? Yes. Which aspect? Actually, I studied food science, technology,、mm. scientific and technological scientific aspects of food. Scientific and technology. At that time, you graduated from university. Yes. Also a professional. Yes. With good career. Yes. Sure, with a good future. Therefore, there must be struggles to serve God. Or still want to pursue advancement in career, but when I look back, I still think that serving God is more long term. The job on Earth may be good, but you don't know what lies ahead. What you do is about eternity. Yes, not a temporary worldly career. So it's grateful. In your many years of pastoring, any special experiences? Or any special challenges in pastoring? I think there are two aspects because I've been pastoring at church at the same time to teach theology. Both aspects. Do it together. Right, but the service at church. The most important thing is interpersonal issues, to handle people's issues, whether church co-workers or brothers and sisters. And to confront the circumstances. In fact, church is not perfect. Church is a place where sinners gather. Therefore, there may be a lot of interpersonal problems. When people are in the valley of their life or their weakness, there would be lots of wrongdoing. As a pastor, I have to face and deal with these things. Sometimes must be tough, and sometimes cannot indulgent. But under such situation, how can I win him back to Christ? And must have grace. Yes, this is what every pastor or church leader, the problems has to face regarding teaching theology. One of my burdens is the students and pastors from mainland China. Many Hong Kong people are very concerned. Yes. About the situation of your son Mo. Yes. Because of an accident, we all know that it is indeed a very difficult time. Yes. How did faith help you to get through the situation now? Facing this trauma, when I look back on God's care and protection in the beginning, especially. The first three months were all ups and downs because during the treatments, the physical response of Mo is ups and downs. Therefore, when his condition is good, our mood would be good. If his condition is not good, our mood would be bad. However, at different stages of the whole process, in fact, it is what the Bible says. Do I believe it or not? How do I hold on to that promise? That helps my whole family, especially Mo, facing such trauma. I remember when I came back and first time seeing him. Of course, I had many conversations with him. My first question to him was, "Mo, do you remember the Bible verses? Do you remember Psalms 23 in the Bible?" Because he was totally quadriplegic, at that time he could not move his neck or even his whole body. Then I asked him, "Do you still remember Psalms 23? Can you recite it?" He said, "I remember. I can recite." I said, "Dad recites it together with you. You recite it first, and I will follow you." He did recite all the six verses of Psalm 23. Recite with his mouth. Right. He can talk. He can speak. 
For the first two months, he could not speak. He recited it with me in later days. He could not speak because his mouth was intubated. Sometimes I did feel his difficulties. As you can imagine, when we open our mouths for 10 minutes, we cannot stand it. And for more than two months, he was like this for 24 hours a day. Therefore, when I recited with him, what he could express at first, he knew it. He used his eyes expressions to express. Later, when the tube was inserted on trachea, he then could speak, and he did recite it. He said to me, Dad, in fact, I recite this psalm every night for comfort and to get through it, because nothing can be done. Your eye expression is like this. You can't move your arms and legs at all. Therefore, the situation of Mo, actually, for the past one year, there have been many miracles. Even the doctors cannot comprehend. He can have certain response. Some senior physiotherapists who had helped him said, I have never learned that he could response like this. As they learn from Mo. To witness what is outside the textbook, really, thanks God. Also, the prayer request we send out every week. At first, I never thought of sending out prayer requests because in the early days, the media kept asking. I then sent prayer requests to Christians and those who care to pray for us. So since the first week until now, unexpectedly, these prayer requests spread all over the world, reported on TV and media in different regions. These prayer requests, I would like to make a remark. I am not the one who wrote it. Every letter was proofread by Mo first. He will finally decide the content. Therefore, those prayer requests, you can say that. In fact, it's Mo's voice from his heart. Hope to send to Christians and people who care about him. To care and pray for his current treatments. And during this time, I received a lot of feedbacks. Say, Pastor, I've been away from the church for more than 10 years. Not one person, but many people. Because of Mo and what you experience in God. It is so true. I am willing to go to church again, especially the first few months. Many young people were willing to go to church. Some have believed in Jesus, but left and now return to church. Some are non-believers. They wanted to see it in church. Why did Mo face such a big trauma? He didn't curse anyone. He didn't vent or express his anger indignantly. Many young people would like to understand why Mo can behave like this. Therefore, this is also a testimony to them, or this is a life experience. The Second Corinthians chapter 4 But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. This is manifested in the life of Mo, a young man. For more than a year, he still has a fighting spirit. He still insists to take treatments. Those professors told me, Reverend Lee, I've treated many people, especially young adults. After three or four months, many cannot insist and would give up. But he said, Mo, you are great. You can continue to persist. So he asked his girlfriend to write down some scriptures and stick them before him as an encouragement to him. It's not easy, but with the grace of the Lord, we keep going. 
To this day, without faith, we would collapse. Without the words of the Bible, we will not have the solid support to face it and then to experience the work of the Holy Spirit to the Word of God. That kind of inspiration, not Amen. just emotional responses or reactions, it is the Holy Spirit to guide us to enter into the truth. And this truth gives us great promise and assurance. I believe the situation of Mo, God will surely lead him step by step. I also hope that God continues to work. I'm grateful many people and Christians who really care all yes. over the world to keep praying As I know, for there are him. many. Recently, I saw a photo which you showed me. Mo can stand up with the help of an yes. instrument. Very grateful. Yes. Regarding the situation of Mo's, anything you would like to share with our friends of our power? Okay. Thanks to all Christians. Thanks to those who care about Mo. I know some of you do not have faith, but care much about Mo, especially at that night. There were more than 10,000 people. If you are one of them, I know you had witnessed this incident, and you can walk out of the shadow because at different churches and even on the street, I met people who came to me and shared with me their spiritual experiences. But I hope that you can be like Mo. To know this God and rely on the word of the Bible and to break through this shadow, here I thank you for your caring heart, your blessings, and your prayers. Finally, the theme of Hour of Power this year is Arise Hong Kong. Anything you would like to encourage us about Arise Hong Kong? I see so many people care about Mo. The thing is, in this depressing environment, actually, we can still have hope. Arise Hong Kong, my encouragement is, if staying in a depressed state of mind, unable to arise, you have to move forward. Not just you to arise, but to arise together with those around you, with the strength of the masses, to support and encourage each other. Then we can arise. Finally, any Bible verse to encourage us? I will use Psalms chapter 27, verse 13 through 14. I remain confident of this. In the land of the living, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Otherwise, I would have lost heart. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. For the past one year, my experience, the experience of Mo, I also hope that it is also your experience. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Lee. Thank you, Mr. I Young. hope you can come again in the future and share with us an hour of power. Thanks, yes, God. Yes, sure. Amen. Thank you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
your worst day, some Tuesday, your birthday. Every day's a good day, now let me tell you why. If you got air in your lungs, if you got blood in your body, you, you are a child of God. Come on and sing it, somebody. We want to get philosophical today by talking about an old idea, it's been around for a long time in philosophy and psychology, about this thing that happens in our mind and heart called the will to life. Uh, here's the theory. The theory goes like this. My life is ever expanding or ever shrinking based on my daily choices. So every day I'm making these decisions in life and they're either, ma either making my life bigger or smaller. They're making me know more people or know the people I know less. They're giving me more opportunities or fewer opportunities. And life is always like this. And it's always easier to make the decisions that shrink my life. And it's usually harder to make the decisions that grow them. Uh, a really good case in point where I've tried to live this philosophy and it worked well for me. There's this beach not too far from my house and that's and one particular summer day, it was really hot, and I did this exact thing. I went in and cooled off, and just as I was coming back in, I felt a pop in my heel, and it hurt. It hurt bad, and I thought, my first thought was, I think I stepped on my foot weird and might have, like, fractured my, my heel. And I came in, and my, the back of my heel was covered in blood. I went to the, you know, limped up to the lifeguard and said, hey, something happened, and he said, oh, it's, a, it's one of these guys. Now, I know this looks really cute, <laughs> He's smiling at you. <laughs> That's a stingray. There's a venom that this particular stingray has that causes the nerves in your legs to flare up. And so it felt like I had, like someone was pressing an iron on my skin all the way up my leg. And this was gnarly. I started, but th it's hard to describe how painful this was. And I remember thinking, I can never go back there. I can never go back there. I need to find a new beach. I need to Google a beach without stingrays. <laughs> that, was, that was my first thought. My second thought was, but what I got rid of was my fear of being stung. Because I thought to myself, one way to look at it is I never go back and avoid it. Another way to look at it is I know how to handle it next time. I know if I get hit like that, I know how to avoid it. I know if I get hit like that, just put it in hot water, it goes away, and you'll be fine. So I didn't want to lose my beach. I didn't want my world to shrink, literally, by being afraid of stingrays. Many of you here today, you've been burned, stung, hurt, betrayed by friends, by the world, by life. You have people you love taken away from you. You've had hardship, illness, things that are unfair. And the temptation is to give in and to say, I'm done with that. I'm never doing that again. I'm never going back. But that's not the way. The way for you is actually to say, I can try again. And this is what life is about. It's about making a decision to ever grow, to grow as a person and to not be afraid of life or the world, God's good world that he made for us that yes, is still broken, yes, has problems, but 
He also gives us the tools, the, this Holy Spirit and the power we need to live life to the full. And that's what I want for you and that's what God wants for you. Not to be afraid of stingrays or anything else. Here's the biggest problem with dealing with me is that's very painful. It's painful to lose weight. It's painful to become a loving person. It's painful to be generous. It's painful to go to church. It's painful to read the books. It's painful to do the things that will make us the person we want to become. We just say, solve my problems. And the Lord says, how about we solve you first? He says that because he loves us. Here's something you'll, you've heard me say a million times and you'll hear me say it a million more times. No doubt almost every person in this room and watching on TV wants their life to be better. Here's how your life gets better. Your life gets better when you get better. Your life grows when you grow. Your life gets bigger when you get bigger. Your life gets richer when you get richer. And I mean on the inside. You say, Lord, solve my money problems. And the Lord says, no, first I want to fix your spending problem or your stinginess problem. Or I want to teach you how to bring more value to the marketplace by teaching you a new skill you never thought you could do. We say, Lord, solve me, solve my relationship problems. I just can't find a good woman. I just can't find a good man. The Lord says, no, we want to, we want to improve you first. We want to first think about the kinds of people you're choosing. We want to talk about your ego. We want to talk about what you bring to a relationship rather than what the man or woman's going to bring to you. We say, Lord, save me from my rotten employees. They show up to work and they don't do it. God says, no, we're going to make you a better leader. We're going to help you serve more. Lord, solve my health problem. The Lord says, no, first you got to put down that thing you've been drinking, that thing you've been smoking, that stuff you've been eating, that bed you haven't been sleeping in. You have to do the painful thing to become the kind of person you want to be. And that's always the thing that lies between us and who we want to really be, is the fear of embarrassment, the fear of loss, the fear of the pain and the struggle that comes between us and life. And there is laid before us the will to life and the will to death. That when you press through, when you push, when you go for it, that's a will to life, even though it hurts. When you give in, give up, let go, procrastinate, you give into a will to death and a will to fail. I like to frame it not as sin and righteousness because the Bible doesn't do it just that way either. When it talks about sin and righteousness, it doesn't do it in terms of shame. You should, you ought to, you better. It doesn't say that. It says the wages of sin is? Is death. Yeah. And the gift of righteousness is? Eternal life. So, the Bible in Deuteronomy in particular says, I put before you life and death, choose life. And that is the choice we have every day. Not just the choice to follow Christ, but the little things that, that reflect within us a will to death or a will to life, a will to give in or a will to push through. And that is the thing about life that is so strange. We all want to become someone more than we are, but we first want God to solve our circumstances. God wants to solve us before he solves our circumstances. Here's something that you might not have thought of too. You might be someone else's circumstance problem. That's something that we never think about. If you have a circumstance problem, it might be your boss, or your client, or toxic relative, your parents, or your spouse, or your kids. We never think that there might be somebody out there praying that I would change, that I would become the man I need to be or the woman I need to be. We never think about that. And, and that's what God's asking for us. Even now, people are thinking, gosh, my brother needs to hear this sermon. <laughs> my sister's got to hear that. I'm sending this to my kids. This sermon is for you. Life, a will to life is a will to pay the price. And life just finds a way, isn't it? It's so amazing, life. It's such an amazing thing. Life always finds a way. Think about, you put a seed in the ground and it gets a little wet and it just starts to dig down those roots through all the dirt and the sand and, and then it starts to shoot up to the sky and it grows as much as it can. It grows as big as it can. It bears as much fruit, as much fruit, 100%, all that is possible and no less. We walk down the sidewalk and we look at this tiny little crack 
that has just a little bit of dry dirt and out of it is coming a living plant. We call it a weed, but I call that amazing. Life just finds a way that it can use a tiny little bit of dust in a crack to grow a plant. And we see all around us things like a city being overgrown once it's abandoned by plants and animals. A watermelon, you put a steel beam around it and it breaks the steel beam. And don't get me started on bamboo. Dug down a foot, put plant poison, gravel and cement over it. Not long later, what, bamboo's coming right through the concrete. <laughs> Life finds a way. Life finds a way. And the, you want to give birth to a new dream? You want to give birth to God's vision in your life? You want to give birth to a book or a song or a work of art or a new movement? It's not easy. You're embracing a will to life, not a will to death. And sometimes you have to push. Push through the concrete, push through the heartache, push through the betrayal, push through the surprises. They all come along. And this is what life is like. God's given you that choice with a dream in your heart. You can give birth to it or you can let it die in the vine. What will you do? Every day we make little choices that reinforce a will to live or a will to die, a will to win or a will to fail. Every day we're making decisions to press through or to just give in and wait another day. What will you do with a dream, with a thing that God's given you? What are you going to do with it? I want to encourage you to not be afraid of pain, suffering, chaos, messiness, loss, betrayal, or any of those things. They all are part and parcel to a will to live. And we see it in sports. We see it in trial. We see it in family. We see it in country. We see it in all things, that the greatest things have a price. But the price is always worth it. This is why Jesus pressed through to the cross. Because the Bible says the joy that was set before him. The joy. There was a joy set before him. And this is the challenge that faces each and every one of us every day. Maybe Jesus even said it better. Anybody who wants to save his life will lose it. Yeah. But anybody who gives up for their life for my sake will find it. And that's just going to be the problem. If you want to get sober, if you want to get healthy, if you want to get well, if you want to fulfill your calling, if you want to ask for a raise, if you want to give a speech, if you want to ask a girl for her number, if you want to go on a roller coaster, whatever it is, that there lies before you the fear the resistance that is always pressing, it will never, ever go away. Here's the problem. If you don't suffer for something in some way, life itself will become suffering. Life itself will become a suffering thing. And I think this is the challenge that so many people have is they have their basic needs met, but they don't have something to wake up for and die for. They don't have something to wake up from or grind for, to earn. But when you find that thing and you start giving for it and you start seeing, it makes all the difference in the world. The point is not suffering. The point is the joy set before you. I have a will to live and to press through and to, be, to live in a bigger world, not a smaller world. Isn't that a good thing? That's what God's calling us to. So don't be afraid. There's this resistance that's always pushing against us. Just be ready for it when the time comes for whatever it is you're called to do. Many people have come up with little things of like how to press through that resistance that pushes up when we want to make that call or write that thing or do that thing that we're called to do. Many Christians would say, and I think this is good, you find a Bible verse, all things are possible or something like that before you face your thing. In King David's day, he was a young man. He was invited to the court of Saul and they were standing on a battlefield facing the Philistines. And on the other side was this famous giant. You might know his name. Come on. Thank you. Goliath, there he is. And Goliath the whole time is mocking and teasing the armies of God. And David looks at his king, who's taller than he is, and looks at these brave men, and he says this famous line, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? <laughs> and a cloud of fear just disappears. It's like a cloud just vanishes from that whole army. And the giant is slayed. I want to encourage you that there will always be a slab of concrete between you and the sun. There will always be a difficult conversation. There will always be a challenge, a mountain, a river, something lying between you. It just will never go away. And you say, it shouldn't be that way. 
And I don't deal in shoulds and shouldn'ts. I'm just telling, when you get your own universe, you can make it different. I didn't make it this way, but this is the way it is. It's the way it is. But with enough time, you'll learn to be a pro and you'll do great. So Father, we ask for that in Jesus' name to see the spirit that lies between us and where we're called to be. And we pray, Father, that you would help us learn what it means to press through for the joy set before us. Lord, we pray that you'd place in us a will to live, that we wouldn't be afraid. And we thank you, Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen. Would you stand with me? And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching our Power in your support to us. Our Power 2023 Hong Kong Special, Arise Hong Kong. Our guest for next week will be Miss Edith Shi the Executive Director of C.K. Hutchison Holdings Limited. Stay tuned. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Today, the message of Pastor Papa Scheller is the will to life. In life every day, we are making choices and struggling with the decisions for life. Pastor Bob Bichela advises, when facing choices for life, choose the will to life. Don't give way to fear and worries. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. We need to take courage to face our difficulties. Even though there is resistance that's always pushing against us, but God wants to deal with our hearts before he solves our problems. Thus, we have to learn from Lord Jesus, press through our difficulties, as joy and blessings are set before us. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVP Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning, and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.ourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVP Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power. And Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. 
Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.